Hey, welcome back to another video. Before we go any further, I need to make absolutely certain that you know what an x-intercept is, and that you know what a y-intercept is, and what the coordinates are for, as far as x goes for a y-intercept, and y goes for an x-intercept. So we're going to do that in a very, very brief video right now, uh, because we're going to get on to the intercept method. I know I showed that to you in a couple videos already, uh, but we'll make it very, very clear on exactly what's going on with the intercept method of graphing. Save ourselves a ton of time. It's awesome. Call it five-second graphing. It's really cool. So let's talk about that. What an x-intercept is, what that means, is the, the point on the x-axis, so that, that value, where that point lies on the x-axis, where the line or the curve or the function or whatever you're talking about crosses the x-axis, if it crosses. There can be more than one. Uh, there can be none. So if there are points where the graph crosses the x-axis, we call those x-intercepts. Now, one big thing. They are points. They're not just values. You wouldn't say x equals 5 because there's a lot of points where x equals 5. We would say 5 comma another number. That number would be 0. We're going to get to that in a minute. A y-intercept is the point on the graph where we cross the y-axis. So x-intercept and y-intercept are, are very specific places where your graph crosses the x-axis or the y-axis respectively. The big thing here is that they're points. They're, they're ordered pair. So you have two numbers to put you on either the x or the y-axis. Now, Let's identify them pretty quickly with, with these two functions. This one's a line. We've got a diagonal line. That's a linear equation and two variables. Uh, what I want you to do right now is just put your pencil on the, on the x-intercept. So this diagonal line is going to cross the x-axis. Where? Where does it cross the x-axis? So if our x-axis is the horizontal axis, we're looking for where that line crosses or touches or intersects, whatever, the x-axis. Put your pencil on there. You should be right here. Now, here's the point. This thing's a freaking point, okay? It's a point. You would not just say negative one. That's not the x-intercept. The x-intercept is negative one comma what? Comma zero. So write that out. Some uh, textbooks don't illustrate that very well, but I need you to know that that is an actual point. The x-intercept here is negative one zero. That is where this line intersects the x-axis. Go ahead and find the y-intercept and write it down, if you would. Remember, the y-intercept's a point. So we're looking at our line, we're looking at our y-axis, and we're saying, where's it touch? Put your pencil there. Put your, your finger there right now, if you would. Well, where this line intersects the y-axis, that vertical axis, is right there. Now, that's not just two. It's got to have a point. It's got to be an ordered pair. What is the ordered pair? Notice how the y-coordinate is the, the, the part that's two. What's the x part? Well, we talked about it in a couple videos, but the x part is zero. Here's what we're trying to, trying to get to. We want to figure out what the y-coordinate is for every x-intercept and what the x-coordinate is for every y-intercept. I really want that stick in your head. I know I've talked about it, but I want that there for sure before we go any further because we're about to use that fact to go backwards and create another technique of graphing called the intercept method. I've illustrated it, but I've never discussed it fully. So our x-intercept, negative 1, 0. Negative 1, 0 for an x-intercept. Y-intercept, 0, 2. That's where we cross the y-axis. Go ahead and find the other ones if you want to right now. So our x, we can have more than one x-intercept. We can do that. This graph has two of them. Find both of them. So if we're looking at where we're crossing the x-axis, I want to label every single point. The, where this graph, it's called a parabola, intersects the x-axis. Um, in general, functions can have more than one x-intercept, but they can't have more than one y-intercept. That would be a non-function. Uh, so normally in algebra, we talk about functions mostly. So our x-intercepts, there's two of them. There's one here, that point. Hey, that's the same point. Negative 1, 0. And we also have an x-intercept at 3, 0. Now the y-intercept, we also have a y-intercept. There's only one y-intercept. If you haven't already, put your pencil on that y-intercept. So here's our y-axis. It's going to touch our graph where? Or our graph touches the y-axis right there. That point is 0, negative 1. 0 for the x, 
negative 1 for the y. We're very conscious that x coordinates come first, our horizontal coordinates come first, and our vertical coordinates or y coordinates come second. If you're okay with where those points are coming from, then let's answer the next two questions, or the next two comments, really. What is the y coordinate for every x intercept? We've talked about it, but let's write that down. If I'm talking about where my graph crosses the x axis, so I'm at an x value, but my y value would always be zero. Every x intercept ever is going to have a y coordinate of zero. Negative one, zero. Negative one, zero. Three, zero. Something zero. Always zero. Every x intercept uh, ever is going to have a y coordinate of zero. The y coordinate for every x intercept is zero which means that for every x-intercept, we are going to get some point x value comma zero. Every time. Now, how about the x-coordinate for the y-intercept? Well, what puts us on the y-axis is having an x value of zero again. Zero for the x is going to put us somewhere here. So every single y-intercept ever is going to have an x value of zero. Zero, two, zero, negative one. Always zero to put us on that y-axis. So every y-intercept ever is going to have an x-coordinate of zero. The x-coordinate for every y-intercept is also zero. Well, that means we're always going to get a point that looks like this. If the x-coordinate is zero, we'd have zero, comma, whatever the y-value is. That's it. The x-coordinate for every y-intercept is zero, so zero y for the y-axis. The y-coordinate for every x-intercept is zero, so it would be x comma zero for your x-intercepts. Now here's what we're going to do. So our video is almost over. We're going to go on to another one. Uh, we're going to use this in the next video. So we're going to go backwards, and we're going to cheat, and I've shown you how to do it already in the last video. Uh, kind of explained it for a long time in that video because it's very important because it saves you a ton of time, efficient graphing, like five seconds. We're going to go backwards. You see, if we know that the y-coordinate for every x-intercept is 0, we can cheat. And we can go, well, wait. Let's just plug in y equals 0. Wouldn't that give us the x-intercept? So think about that logic. If the y-coordinate for every x-intercept is 0, let's let the y-coordinate be 0, and it will give us the x-intercept. That's brilliant. And the same thing for the y-intercept. If the x-coordinate of the y-intercept is 0, let's let the x-coordinate be 0, and it will give us back the y-intercept. Now, why is that important? How many points do you really need minimum to graph a line? You don't need three, like we teach you in plotting. That was just to check your work. We only really need two. Well, that would be an x-coordinate, that's our x-intercept, and a y-intercept. If we can find those two things very quickly, we can graph a line very quickly. And I'm going to show you that that is not a whole lot of work to do. That's in the next video, so I'll see you in a little while.